Hello, this is John Cressball from the University of Nebraska at Lincoln. Uh, this is another video in the series on mixed methods of research. And today I want to talk about how to introduce a mixed methods study. And there's three parts to this. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about writing an introduction to a study, the opening passages, the first few paragraphs that you see in a research project. Uh, then I'll turn to the next phase of an introduction, a purpose statement or a study aim. And finally, we'll talk about writing uh, research questions, which includes quantitative, qualitative, and mixed methods questions. So let's start with an introduction. These are the first couple of paragraphs you typically see in a research project. Uh, they've got to do several things. Uh, they need to create some reader's interest so that the reader is encouraged to read on and becomes curious about the research project. It needs to talk about an issue or a problem that needs to be addressed. Uh, now this is not an unusual thing in research. Uh, we see, for example, uh, novelists. They start with a dilemma that then works through the novel and possibly comes to some resolution later on. Or we see a sitcom on TV that starts with a problem or an issue, or several issues that then need to be resolved. Or even in the field of music, when, when uh, composers create a dissonant chord that's got to be resolved with a chord that's pleasing to the sound. So coming up with a problem uh, has many uh, ways we can look at it in this world that we live in and it certainly is a major part of research. This introduction also needs to state the central aim or purpose of a study and possibly advance the research questions. So if you view this introduction as, as a number of stacked layers, the first layer is a general introduction to the problem the second layer would be the purpose, and the third layer would be uh, the research questions. So I'm going to talk about these three parts in that order. Now, if you look at a typical introduction in a research study, and go to a good journal article in one of the leading journals, what you're going to see is a template for how authors write this introduction. They just don't randomly uh, present uh, introductory comments. There, there's an actual structure to this introduction. I call it a, a social science deficiencies model. And it has five different parts to it. So here are the five parts. The topic, the problem, the existing literature, what's missing in the literature, and then the audience. So I'm going to talk about each one of these parts. In fact, you might view them as five paragraphs that open up your research project. First of all, the topic. You know, what is the general subject area that you're addressing? And when you introduce this right at the beginning of your introduction, it can't be so esoteric or deep that you lose your readers. I often talk about lowering the person down into the well slowly. So this topic needs to be presented in a general way in the first couple of sentences of your introduction. It also needs to create reader's interest. So my friends in the, the literature area talk about a narrative hook. Well, what would be in this narrative hook? Well, you could state some statistics. You could alert the reader to an important problem. <clears throat> you could provide some references people that have talked about this issue. So that's the topic. Okay, now following the topic then comes the problem statement. You know, an issue, a concern that this research is going to address. Uh, something that needs to be potentially solved through your research. A problem such as um, we have uh, students dropping out of schools. We have people that 
don't go to uh, screening for for cancer you know a real issue that's out there in this world so that's the problem section now the next section in these five parts would be the literature what is the re what does the research say about this particular problem has anyone studied it what have they come up with when they've studied the problem so you need to, to have a passage about the current existing research that's been done on the problem and talk about it in not a specific literature review way but talk about it in terms of general categories of literature that have looked at this this problem that's the third part the fourth part would be deficiencies in this literature so what are the problems with this literature about the pro about the, in studying this problem for example uh, are there certain ideas variables uh, phenomena that need to be studied are there certain populations that need to be studied are there are there mixed results in the literature that so you need to resolve those results what are the deficiencies of the existing literature that your project will remedy now here's where mixed methods comes in because one of the deficiencies might be that you haven't uh, they haven't gathered qualitative data in addition to quantitative data in order to address this problem or perhaps they they have some understanding of the quantitative data but they don't really have qualitative explanations so these rationales for doing mixed methods research the very reason for us to collect quantitative and qualitative data can be stated as a deficiency in the literature. The final part, and the fifth part of an introduction, then would be the audience. In this passage, I'd like to have people talk about what audiences might profit from reading this study, and to mention several audience possibilities. For example, will this study be of value Will addressing this problem be of value to policymakers, to decision makers, to federal legislators, state legislators, to teachers, to administrators, to other researchers, to community members? There's a lot of different audiences. And so what I see in this final paragraph of this introduction would be a commentary about what audiences might profit from studying this problem. Now I did a study once looking at teen smoking in high schools and um, this is one of the introductions. It wasn't the final introduction that I published but this is one of the introductions that I published or th that I wrote up from this study. It has the parts of a good introduction. You can see how I talked about the topic in the opening sentence. You know, tobacco use is a leading cause of cancer in American society. Now that narrative hook is something that a broad audience can identify with. So I'm not taking the person down into the barrel immediately, but I'm lowering them slowly on a topic that they can relate to. And then I talk about how this is a problem because uh, it leads to premature death, it leads to cancer, etc. And I go into the problem. So that's the second part. Then I talk about the literature, the evidence that talks about this problem. And you can see where through this passage I'm citing some different references to support uh, what has been done in studying this problem. The next section is the deficiencies. And I talk about how there's a need for future research in this area to address this problem, to understand the school, the school context of a high school as a site for uh, adolescent tobacco use. And I, I, I move through some of the deficiencies. And I end this introduction by pointing out that there are several audiences that would profit from learning about this problem. 
uh, such as other researchers, such as adolescents, such as administrators and teachers. So this passage, which is typically about a page to page and a half in length, has five parts of a good introduction, the topic, the research problem, the evidence for the problem in the literature, the deficiencies, and the audience. And so mixed methods fits into this, into that deficiencies point, such as experiments need follow-up, mechanisms need to be explained, we need better instruments, so you, you weave into your introduction in the deficiencies passage points about the need for mixed methods research. So now we've written the introduction. And following that, we put in a purpose statement, or it's sometimes called the study aim. So this is the most important paragraph discussion in your entire research report because it's setting forth the overall objective of your, pro of your project, the intent. If it's not clear, the reader's going to be lost throughout the rest of the study. And there's a way to construct this paragraph so that it can be a good mixed methods purpose statement. Well, uh, in 2011, I helped to chair the National Institute of Health's study group coming up with best practices for mixed methods research. And we spent a lot of time thinking about how to construct the study aims or the purpose for our project. And these recommendations were going forward to people that were not only developing applications for funding, but also people that would be reviewing applications as they came in. Uh, some of our thoughts on this, as stated in that document, was that there needs to be different study aims for the different parts of a mixed methods project. A quantitative study aim, a qualitative, and a mixed methods study aim. And that this, these study aims need to be ordered in terms of the design. So if, for example, you're doing an um, explanatory sequential basic design, your first study aim would be quantitative followed by qualitative. But one of the interesting things that developed in this conversation was how you actually structure the language of the study aim. The, the discussion was that you first put the content first. You know, I'm going to understand why people don't undergo a colorectal cancer screening. And then mention the method second through focus groups and through surveys that we, we might do. So it's content followed by method. That led me to think a little bit about, well, how do we compose a mixed method study to emphasize both the content and the method? And so here is a script, as I call them. In this script, you fill in the blanks with your content on your project. And this is a fairly complete script for a purpose statement section for a mixed methods project. In this case, it's a convergent design. Now, this script has certain parts to it. I want you to look at the opening sentence. In that opening sentence, you, you convey the overall intent, the content aim of your project. And then the second sentence speaks to the type of design you're using. In this case, a convergent parallel mixed methods design. And you briefly define that. And then the third part would consist of a discussion of your quantitative and qualitative data. So first, quantitative data will be testing a theory that predicts relationship among variables. And then your qualitative data will explore a certain participants of a site. So this is a passage now about your actual data collection and what you're going to be, what data you're going to be gathering in your mixed method study. And then you end this with a rationale for why you're mixing qualitative and quantitative research. So the rationale might be in a convergent design to gain a more complete understanding 
through gathering both quantitative and qualitative data. So what we have here is a script for a purpose statement in mixed methods research that includes the intent, design, information about your data, and then a rationale for why you're collecting both forms of data. So this is an example of a purpose statement for a convergent design. And we could, uh, in my books, I've created uh, scripts for other types of designs as well. But basically, they're following the format of the intent, the design, the data, and the rationale. Now, let me turn to research questions next. In a mixed method study, we often see quantitative questions, qualitative questions, and mixed methods questions. And the order of these would, would fit your design. So what we have now in terms of our introduction, an introductory passage that sets forth the problem, a purpose statement, and in many cases then the research questions. And those three parts comprise an introduction to a mixed methods project. Now, in the research question area, we need to construct good quantitative research questions. Or they could be hypotheses. We use hypotheses when we can predict what the relationship would be. We use research questions when we don't know what the prediction is. Typically, hypotheses are a more traditional model of writing questions that you often see in experimental research. But whether you write hypotheses or questions, there are certain basics that you need to think about. First of all, these questions or hypotheses are based upon variables. And what we're doing with variables, either we're comparing groups or we're relating variables. We might also be describing trends using single variables. So you need to to identify what your variables are going to be that you're going to actually measure in your mixed methods project. Often these variables come from a theory or broad explanation found in the literature. So often theories are uh, very research questions are used to test theories. Some people like to write only hypotheses that are predictions. And these could be written in either a directional way, like uh, the higher the level of anxiety, the less achievement in a classroom. Or they might be written in a non-directional way. There's no significant difference between anxiety and achievement in a classroom. Variables come in different types. So we have independent and dependent variables probable cause and effect. These are the major variables. But we have others out there too. There might be a mediating variable that stands between the independent and dependent variable. That, ex that explains the dependent variable uh, through this mediating variable. We might have moderating variables where the combined effects of two variables influence a dependent variable. We might have Variables that are covariates, variables we're trying to control in our statistical analysis. Often these are demographics like age or gender. So we have all these different types of variables that could go into our hypotheses or questions. And finally, we often see a word order, independent followed by dependent, in the hypotheses in a fairly consistent language that's used. Besides writing good quantitative questions or hypotheses, we also need good qualitative questions. In qualitative research, we think in terms of only questions, not hypotheses, and that there's a central question, an overriding large question, and some sub-questions. Typically, I say five to seven sub-questions. These sub-questions actually subdivide the central question into some parts. And often the sub-questions are used as key questions in data gathering, such as in your interview a pro protocol or on your observation protocol. 
Qualitative begin questions begin with words such as how or what. Typically the word why is used in more of a quantitative context, so how something occurs or what occurred. We have exploratory verbs such as uh, to try to discover, to understand, to explore, to describe, to report. These are all good open-ended action verbs that we use in qualitative questions. We also know that the qualitative questions may change some. Once you get into the field and start gathering data, these questions might be shaped to more concretely try to assess what you want to learn from your participants. Sometimes these questions also specify the participants in sight, the research site. So a good example of a qualitative question might be, what is self-esteem for these adolescents in a middle school? There I began with what? I focused on the topic self-esteem. Um, I mentioned the participants, the students. I mentioned the site, the middle school. Now, we also have a third type of research question, a mixed methods question. It's a new question that's been developed in the mixed methods field. Uh, you won't find it in any methods book. Uh, you'll find it written, though, into many mixed methods projects. And these are basically questions that address both the quantitative and qualitative components of a mixed method study, and they relate directly to the type of design. So I've given you here some examples of types of mixed methods questions. So for convergent design, to what extent do the qualitative results confirm the quantitative results? The explanatory design, how do the qualitative data help explain the quantitative results? Exploratory design, to what extent do the quality are the qualitative findings generalizable to this larger quantitative sample and population. An intervention design. How do the qualitative findings enhance an interpretation of the experimental results? So there I'm placing qualitative after the experiment and saying here's how qualitative can help explain some of the outcomes of the experiment. A social justice question might be how do the qualitative findings Provide an enhanced understanding, understanding of the quantitative results, exploring inequities, social justice issues, etc. And then a multi stage design might be how do the different phases of the project help to explain the overall program of objective in the multi stage project? So you can see in each one of these questions, what I'm doing is I'm bringing in a qualitative part and a quantitative part. Now, those examples were all written from what I would call a methods orientation. I was just talking about the data collection and the data analysis results for quantitative and qualitative. So the methodological oriented would be to what extent do the qualitative results confirm the quantitative results. Now what we can do is we can put in a little bit more content into this and make it personal to the specific project, such as how do the interviews with adolescent boys support the quantitative results that their self-esteem changes during the middle school years. So what's developed in the field of mixed methods in the last couple of years is this idea of a hybrid research question. So not only do we have a new type of question, a mixed methods question, but we now have a hybrid one where you use language that implies both methods as well as content. What results emerge from comparing the qualitative data about self-esteem with outcome instrument data? So when you're writing your research questions, you have three types. A quantitative question, a qualitative, and a mixed methods question. And the order of these questions depends on the type of design you have. Stepping back to the overall picture here, we're writing an introduction to a mixed methods project. It starts by an introduction that has several parts 
each written in, into a paragraph, about a page, page and a half in length. We then have a mixed methods purpose statement that sets forth the purpose of the study that indicates the quantitative and qualitative data coming into the purpose. And then we have the research questions that are organized in terms of quantitative, qualitative, and mixed methods questions. So that's how to write a good introduction for a mixed methods project. Thanks for your time.